Hi YouTube! In this video I want to show you my brand new Xiaomi Mi Pad that I just received from the XiaomiShop.com. When you order it, it comes in a very plain cardboard box like this one with some specs on the back. It comes with a 5 volt USB wall charger. It comes with a micro USB data and charging cable. It comes with some Chinese paperwork. It also comes with a tray opener so you can open the tray for your TF card. But the Xiaomi shop also included some goodies like a screen protector. And they also included a flip case which is very cool. You can put some cards in here and you can also use it as a stand. This tablet has a 7.9 inch capacitive 10 point multi touch screen with an amazing 2048 by 1536 pixel resolution. It is an IPS display and it also is a one glass solution. It weighs about 360 gram, it is about 8.5 millimeters thick and it has a built in 6700 milliamps battery. It has the Nvidia Tegra K1 quad core CPU inside which is clocked at 2.2 gigahertz. It has 2 GB of RAM, 16 GB of internal memory and it also supports TF cards up to 128 GB. It runs on Android 4.4.4 KitKat with MIUI 5 or 6 on top of it depending on what kind of firmware you have running. It has two Wi-Fi antennas, a G sensor, a light sensor, a gyroscope sensor, a magnetic field sensor and it also has a notification LED. It supports USB on the go so you can hook up different USB devices. It has two cameras, one main camera with an 8 megapixel uh, resolution and autofocus f2.0 and one front facing camera with a 5 megapixel resolution also f2.0. Let's take a closer look at the device. You have your notification LED right here, a light sensor and your front facing camera right here. Your home back and menu buttons are soft touch buttons and they light up nicely. On the bottom you have your USB port. On the left side you have your tray for your TF card. On top you have a 3.5mm headphone jack. On the right side you have your power button and your volume rockers. And on the back you have your main camera, you have two microphones, you have stereo speakers right here. Some thoughts about this device. One thing I need to mention though, when I got this tablet it came with a multi-language firmware running on MIUI 5. It had the Play Store and Google account already in place so there was nothing you had to worry about. But I flashed it to a MIUI version 6 right away. Like always I installed additional apps and games for demonstration purposes. If you haven't done so already please subscribe to my channel. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments please leave them in the comment sections below and please stay tuned if you want to see how this baby performs. Thank you so much for watching. Let's start with the stock launcher. As you can see it is very fast, it is very very snappy but there are a couple of differences compared to MIUI on a cell phone. Number one there is no theme store which I think is sad. And number two, the widgets have dedicated pages right here, so you cannot place the widgets wherever you like, which I also think is pretty sad. But let's start by going into the system settings. Let's check out about the tablet. You can see it's running on Android 4.4.4 KitKat. There you have it. Let's go back into the settings. Let's check out the notification light. You can select what kind of color you like. For example, you have blue, red, yellow, green, cyan, white and violet. Let's check out the storage. There you can see it has about 14 GB available right here. But let's start by checking out some Google Apps. As you can see, the Play Store is working just fine. And next up, let's check out Google Maps. Now even though it does not have GPS it still can locate me. Let me just try to uh, load a random address right here. Let's check out the street view. Street view is working fine. Let's do a little zooming. And we can also check out the compass mode. 
And as you can see, the compass mode is working just fine. So that tells us that this uh, device has an um, e-compass and also a gyroscope sensor. Let's go and let's just try a compass app right here. Compass is working, even though the app is pretty shitty. Let's exit. Next up, let's check out CPU-Z. There you have it, it has an NVIDIA Tegra K1 CPU, it has four cores and you can see the sensors right here. But we can also check out the sensors with a sensor box app. Go back. We have the accelerometer, also known as the G sensor. We have a light sensor, let's see if that works right here. Yes, it's working. And we also have the magnetic field sensor again. There you go. And the gyroscope sensor I'd rather demonstrate with a live wallpaper. Now this thing is called Gyrospace 3D and it only works on um, devices that have a gyroscope sensor. Let's just set the wallpaper, why not? And it does not uh, stop the performance at all. Next up, let's try Google Reader. Let's just open a PDF document. Don't allow, I don't know what it wants from me. Zooming, no problem. Of course, we can also switch to a portrait mode. But let's go back into landscape. Next up, let's try Google Playbooks because an MID or a tablet, of course, is very good for ebook reading. And thanks to the high resolution, it really looks very good. Let's see what do we have next. Let's test out the multi touch. That is a 10 point multi touch screen right here. Let's do some um, benchmarking. Let's start with N22. Now N22 scores at around 50,000 points, which is very, very good. Let's check out the device info. I don't know if you can read this. And here you have all the supported sensors again. Yes, I do want to quit. Let's do more benchmarks. To be fair, let's kill all the apps that are running already. Let's start with Nina Mark. Let's give it a run. And to speed up things a little bit, I'm gonna do a jump cut. Almost done. And it scores at 59.9 frames per second. Let's do another benchmark. Let's test Quadron Standard. Okay, run full benchmark. And again, to speed up things, I'm gonna do a jump cut. And the score is 21,682 points, which is very high. What else can I show you right here? Let's try a NVIDIA Tegra demo. Now this is exclusively for NVIDIA devices, so if you want to try this at home, you will have to have an NVIDIA device. And this looks just amazing. I mean, this is a render of a human head. And I don't know if you can see the details right here, but I think this is very astonishing. You can also change the, to a grid view or whatever. Now the performance is very, very good on this device. Next up, let's go into the browser. Let's see what we have here. Let's just load a CNN. It's loading fast. Scrolling is no problem. Zooming also no problem. The rotation speed is also very good. Let's check out the uh, gallery. Let's go into local and let's just play a movie. 
This is a 1080p movie recorded in a MKV format. Let me just fast forward or scroll back a little. And the colors and viewing angles are very good. But let's also check out some pictures. Let's go back and let's go into the pictures. Let's just flip through a couple of pictures. Again, zooming no problem at all. Let's try out the camera real fast. Now it's pretty dark in my room already, but let me just take a random picture right here. There you have the picture. Not looking too good right now. It's, it's a little blurry, but let's check out the um, information. As you can see, it is a f2.0 and this is an uh, 8 megapixel resolution. We can also test the USB on the go. Let me hook up my USB device right here. And let's see if it's mounted already. There it is. It mounted my external USB device. So USB on the go is working just fine. There you have it. This is the USB storage. Let's just load an image. There you have it. My kernel zap logo. So USB on the go is also working fine. What else can I show you? I think this is pretty much it. But of course, if you don't like MIUI, I can also uh, switch to a different launcher. For demonstration purposes, let me just show you the SPB Shell 3D launcher. So right here you can place your um, widgets wherever you like. And this is how SPB Shell 3D looks like on this device. Just in case you don't like MIUI, there's always an alternative to the uh, stock launcher. So you can pretty much install whatever you like. Some thoughts about this device. The build quality is very good, but not perfect. Thanks to the plastic bag, it feels a little slippery. So if this is something you're concerned about, I suggest you also buy a silicon bumper. The display is very good. I mean, the screen resolution is just amazing. The Wi-Fi reception is the best I've seen so far on any MID. I was totally surprised how good it is. The performance is monster, and I'm not kidding here, no matter what you throw at it, it can handle it. The stereo speakers are good, and the sound quality through headphones is very good. The two cameras take decent pictures, but that is nothing that will blow your mind. But there are also some shortcomings. This device does not have GPS, no HDMI out, no MHL support, no LED flash and it also does not have 3G so it's totally dependent on a Wi-Fi connection. Bottom line, I think this is a very high-end performance device. It is great for gaming, couch surfing, watching movies, streaming videos, ebook reading etc. But there are also some shortcomings in the connectivity department. Last but not least, I want to show you the viewing angles of this device and do a little gaming. Thank you so much again for watching and see you soon.